Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for another very special edition of Wowza Live with our host, Ned Dennison. Ned? Hello, everyone. I'm the chairperson of the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. I'm, I'm based in Ireland, and for, uh, for the, the longest time, many, many, many decades, the, the swimmer we all, uh, we all admired the most was Ted Keenan from, from Northern Ireland. Uh, but we'll talk about him for a second. Recently, we've got Steve Redmond, uh, the first to complete the, um, the Ocean Sevens, but, but Ted was the original warrior for our, for our proud island. I'm delighted to say I've got his son, Brian, on the line with us. Ted has passed away a few years. Uh, Brian, please say hello and tell us a bit about your, your dad's career. Uh, hello, uh, good morning, good evening, wherever you're listening from. Uh, my name is Brian Keenan, I'm son of uh, Ted Keenan, who still is um, only one of two people that have completed the English Channel, North Channel and Bristol Channel. Um, he completed the English Channel in August 1972. The following year, 73, did the North Channel. And in 75, July 1975, he completed the, the famous treble of the Bristol Channel. And to this day himself, and Kevin Murphy, incidentally, who's an Englishman, uh, he also completed the three channels. Daddy also was the first Irishman to swim the English Channel back in uh, August 1972. He was in the water 18 hours and 11 minutes, which is a pretty long time, but he actually done it in a spring tide, which was, if the swimmers would, underst would understand the, the difference in the tides. And he did the North Channel in 18 hours, 27 minutes uh, the following year, and the Bristol Channel took him 14 hours, 26 minutes. Um, he didn't start to swim until late in his life, probably early 30s. He always said he, he always, he, he swam, he never got tired from him and he got fed up. <laughs> when he, he would get out of the water and he got fed up, he never was tired. So he had, he had this tremendous stamina. Um, he, swam, he could swim for hours. Like, and, uh, he was very strong and uh, he was very determined. Uh, stubborn would be another word for it probably. Um, he's passed away now, it would be seven years this September. But uh, a living legend he was, unbelievable, great man, tough, tough as teeth. For the, for the viewers, who, for, for the viewers who, who who aren't following some of the history, long before Mr. Ton, Munitonis made the uh, the Triple Crown a, a, a bucket list to have, and two hundred of us have gone out and gotten it, there was the original Triple Crown, or the original Triple, which was the English Channel, the North Channel, and the Bristol Channel. Most of you wouldn't be familiar with the Bristol Channel. Uh, let's just say that the, the water moves so fast up there that people right. surf in the river. Um, so this is a, a, an ugly, ugly piece of water, um, Bristol on the west coast of England. Um, and uh, still very, very few people have ever done the, um, the, the Bristol Channel. It's a tough swim, really tough swim. Um, Brian, you, you, were on the, you were on the boat crewing for, for your dad for, uh, for, for much of it. But before you get to that, Tell us about your relationship with your dad. You know, did he teach you to swim? Um, did you did you did you watch him before he let you crew? And when you crewed for him, did you get to yell at him? Um, Daddy would have taught me to swim surely from I was, I was supposed to start to learn to swim when I was about five six years of age, and I always used to swim with him. So um, I would have trained with him. We trained in the gym a lot together, circuit training which we would run a lot of uh, during the winter time because he couldn't swim in the sea in Ireland, it was too cold. He didn't really hit the sea till about uh, the beginning of May and he would have swam right through till probably September. Um, but most of his training would have been done in the gym in the winter months and I would have, any time he was training, I trained with him. We were very close, very, very close. We were probably best mates rather than father and son, to be honest with you. Um, as regards yelling at him, no, I would never yell at him at the matter. Uh, I would have swam with him and when you think he he might have been kind of lonely. I mean, you know, you guys know better than me. It's the loneliest sport in the world, long distance swimming. Uh, you're in there on your own. Uh, it's not like a game of football. You have 10 or 14 other teammates uh, helping you out. You you are there on your own and you can only do it yourself. Nobody else can do it for you. So I would have swam. Uh, back and forth with him uh, on the channels or any swim he was on. Um, I just would have encouraged him all the time. So I would rather I would never share that him no because he he never complained once in the water. And no matter what was happening, how rough it was, how badly stung he got, or how cold it was, 
I, I never once knew him to you know, whinge it, we call it here. He never, he never complained once in the water, never. Um, and he would have had to be ordered out before he would uh, fail a swim. It's one of his biggest achievements. We always thought he actually failed the Channel, the English Channel in 1970. And he was in the water 19 hours and 48 minutes. But um, and it, it was a France to England attempt. And we it was that rough. We were washed up the southeast coast of England to a place uh, which was, was known as the Goodwin Sands. The Goodwin Sands was famous for um, the, the, the ships during the Second World War that were sunk. And we were in danger of running aground over one of the, these sunken wrecks. And the, the observer of the Channel Swimming Association actually ordered him out of the water. And he, he cried like a child for a couple of days because he was grand in the water, but mommy was on the boat. I mean, I was only uh, only 11 years of age. And there was, mommy couldn't swim. And there was a danger of our boat uh, crashing and the danger of mummy's life being lost. So he had no other choice than to get out of the water. And we were only about a mile off the coast, you know, and he, nearly 20 hours in the water. And he actually, he, he got a, an award that year for endurance. He got an endurance award from the Channel Swimming Association because it was such a tremendous attempt to be a failure, which was unfortunate. Tell us about uh, what he was feeding, what his, what his pattern was in the water. Right. He fed every hour on the hour. I mean, if he started at half three, at half four, he had his first feed and so on. He used to take, uh, a, 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 whether it was an energy drink or whatever, I'm not sure, but it was called Nutriment, N-U-T-R-A-M-E-N-T. -E and there was different flavors. And there was uh, a strawberry flavor, a chocolate flavor, and a vanilla flavor. And he used to take the vanilla one. I used to heat it up on a wee gas stove on the boat. And uh, he, he took it out of a baby's, a baby's uh, sucking bottle. We used to cut the teeth so it could squirt into his mouth. And we handed it out on a little fish in that, you know. And he used to take peach juice because it was good for the, the rawness on, on the, the tongue from the salt water. And uh, a mouthwash called glycerine. And that's only about the three things he would have taken any time on any swim. Right? And growing up and having been part of his crew, did, did you... Did, at what age did you get the impression that your dad was was really quite a famous swimmer? You know, were people stopping in the streets? Were you were you in the pub when the the cheer went up? How did well, it impact you? Uh, well, actually, the funny thing about it, um, he as I said, he, he always felt he could he, he could fed up swimming before he got tired, and actually in a in a pub in Anaskillen way back, uh, nineteen sixty seven. Uh, him and a guy were having a bet that uh, Lock Earn, uh, you've heard of Lock Earn, then I'm sure. Uh, the, the widest point, it's probably about nine, ten mile. It, it had never been swam, and uh, this guy, he bet me da. Uh, I think it was a tenner at that time, which was a lot of money. <laughs> in 1967, he said, "I bet you, Ted, you couldn't swim that." And he says, "I will." And uh, he went out about two or three weeks later, and he swam it, and that, he got the bug then of long distance swimming. Like we organised a couple of rowing boats. Um, we left Maho, which is a, a town land down the, the shore road, the Bleak Road, uh, to, to, from out of Enniskillen. And we swam over to, or he swam over to a place called Muckris. It's a little jetty, uh, marine area now. But we know no navigation <laughs> skills or anything, but we knew where we were leaving. And uh, about after about two no, but it, it took him five hours and 20 minutes. So after about two and a half to three hours, we had guys on the Mucker side and they actually lit large tractor tires and uh, created this big fire. So we followed the smoke <laughs> and that's how we knew that where the far side was. That is that is the truth, like. <laughs> and you know, the middle of the broad log, which is a pretty dangerous place, like. Um, so that's, that's how we completed that swim, like. I, I tell people that and they laugh, like, you know, but that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> he was a wild man. He was a wild man. You try that, anyway. <laughs> and Brian, I guess, I guess we have to point out this was a little before GPS. <laughs> oh, it was that way before GPS. I mean, I was only eight years of age at the time. Like, <laughs> and my uncle Charlie, God rest of him, and a, and a, and a first cousin, they let these tires. Like, <laughs> uh, we have a, we we have one very very famous picture of your of your dad on his knees. 
um, clearly right after a swim, which every yeah. swimmer in the world can relate to. Yeah, yeah. Set, set okay. the scene for us. Uh, tell us yeah. about the swim. Tell us about the, the difficulties on, and, and, and get us to the end where he's in that picture. That, that picture actually was taken at the end of the Bristol Channel. And as I say, that was the, that was the treble completed. But it was a very, very tough swim. He actually vomited every hour for eight hours at the start of that swim. He, sw he swallowed raw sewage in the first hour. And that's, that left us anything he had then he threw up. He actually, his, his knees were pressed against his chest while he was boking into the water. And those guys, the, there was hardened um, lifeguards. Um, they worked for the Royal, the Royal National Life Saving. The guys on the boat, after, the, after about three hours, they couldn't look at that. He actually vomited. And I couldn't believe that a man would actually physically get sick and keep swimming. I mean, if me or you got sick today, you'd go to your bed and lay down. Uh, but he swam on and swam through it. And it was the ninth, after the ninth hour, his stomach started to settle because he had thrown up everything that, that, that was sickening him. So that was a pretty tough swim. Um, it actually blew up rough too, four, five, uh, after about 10 hours. And it settled then again, but it was a, a, a tough swim. So um, as, I, as I was saying before we, we started, he used to pray a lot to St. Joseph. Um, and he actually... Every swim he was on, uh, the, the St. Joseph prayer, he had it uh, taped inside his swimming togs. So when he finished the, the Bristol Channel, as soon as he, he cleared the water, he just dropped to his knees and he said a very sincere prayer to St. Joseph, uh, thanking him for uh, keeping him safe across the whole swim and being able to do it. But it, it, was, a, it was a great swim for, for him to do because he had such um, obstacles thrown at him that any other person would have got out of the water, to be honest with you. Now, now that was the year they had that giant fire in Wales that, that consumed 10,000 hectares. Was that your family setting fire to Wales to give him a, a shot? At <laughs> Very good. But you were talking about the Bristol Channel there. The rise and fall of the tide, there's over 40 feet. Um, there's a rock known as Tusker Rock. And when, when the tide's fully in, that rock, completely is submerged in the water and then when the tide's out it's sticking up you know like a big pin out of the water so uh, the, the 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 pilot boat when we were coming near that Tusker rock it had to divert away from the small uh, dinghy so, so it could stay with that eh, which I was on and then the boat then met us again once it cleared the rock the area you know did, did you know where you were going to land on that swim we, we are, yeah, we, we, you see, you have to swim it, yeah, you had to do it at, at the widest point for it to be recognized. So we, we ended up on a little beach uh, at near Port Crawl, little sandy beach. It wasn't that big a beach now. So that's, that's where he's actually kneeling there saying that prayer. <laughs> and, and what was your dad's relationship with the other marathon swimmers in Ireland? Who did he inspire? Who came to him? Did he, did he hold court on a regular basis with advice? How did that all work? No, uh, the only one he really got to know was a guy by the name of Jack McClellan uh, from Belfast. Um, uh, he would have failed the English Channel way back before the, the, that he attempted it. Um, apart from that, there was, there was another swimmer from uh, Belfast, Larry Burke. He was over that time in 72 as well to attempt the English Channel, but he, 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 he didn't go. Um, that's about the only two guys that would have done any long distance swimming that I can recall. There was a fella, George Russell too, but he would have, he more hung about with, with uh, Larry Burke. He didn't, he wouldn't have done any long swims. And the fella, Jim Burton, who would have been, um, he would have been secretary of the Irish Long Distance Swimming Association way back at that time. The, you see, it was, it wasn't that popular sport, you know, to be honest with you, Ned. Uh, the only other guy that would have done any long swimming, to, to, to my knowledge, was that guy, guy Jack McClanahan, you know. And uh, that he was a one-man show, really, you know. He, he had myself and whatever crew uh, was on the any pilot boat that was on any of the channel swims. But the local swims, uh, the like of the Loch Earn, which he, would have, he swam it four or five times after, uh, doing it the first time. He used to treat it as a kind of a practice run then, so he did before a big swim. He swam from Mullock Moor to Bendorn, which is a lovely swim. Because um, you leave you leave County Sligo, you swim through County Leitrim, and you end up in County Donegal. 
You know, that's really unique. It, it, it did it a couple of times, but again, there were local fishermen that would have supplied the boat. You know, the guys would have knew the way, type of thing. Yeah. Donegal Bay was not a great swim. It's a tough swim now, Donegal Bay. Again, uh, there would have been local uh, fishermen from Killy Beggs that would have done the, the boat that time. Tell us about the um, exhibition you helped organize in the local museum. And, yeah, and, the, and, 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 you know, what was involved in putting that together and, and what the reception was? Uh, there, was, there was a lot of work put uh, involved in getting that all organized. But um, a girl, Sinead, Sinead Riley, in uh, the museum here in Anniskin, and she done a, a mountain of work on that. But we supplied all the stuff, uh, scrapbooks, photographs, uh, trophies, um, certificates. And we, we brought it all into her and then she, she put the whole thing together. And it, it lasted for three months, which was which was usually these exhibitions would usually be on for just three or four weeks. But that is was that popular. It was on for three months, the whole summer months. Excuse me, two years ago. And uh, there was people from all over the world um, actually came to see it because you had a visitor's book you signed as you could come in, you know. So there was, there was thousands would have seen it. It was brilliant and it was really good. It was great recognition for him because I always thought that he never got the recognition that he deserved. Uh, to be honest with you, the, the Hall of Fame was a great recognition, surely. Um, for what one, of, one of the things we're we're encouraging our honorees to do, or the or the children, our grandchildren, the honorees is 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 to make sure that those old records don't get lost. No, and no. and you folks did it did a great job of of pulling those all together. And, and 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 presenting them. I I think I was at Belfast Castle a year or so back, where you you had all of that material available for us. Yeah, was was it? That, um, yeah, and also we had it. We brought some of the stuff, some of the panels down to uh, Donabe at that time. Um, that he he got the Hall of Fame award for uh, the Irish Long Hall of Fame award. We brought some of the stuff down that time, so we did. Fair, uh, Steve. Smith? Smith? No. I'm trying to think of the guy. Steve Miller? Steve Miller. Steve Miller. That's the guy. He's a lovely fella. Uh, we were in contact with him about the whole thing. So that went well as well. And and yourself? What uh, what what big swims have you put in and what have you got on your list? <laughs> no, that, that he put me off long distance swimming for life, I can tell you. <laughs> I happened to build Danny. I'm too slim. He was more he broadly, more broadly built than me. A lot tougher. No, I I'd, I'd played a lot of football all my life, and actually I've been in the sea a couple of times already. I've done a, I, I do a bit of swimming, surely, but um, I would have swam a couple of miles with Daddy, surely, but um, no, no interest in doing any long swims. No way, no way. <laughs> I would have made to stick the cold. <laughs> well, uh, Brian, I want I want to thank you very much for your time today, and I and I want to assure you that your father's legacy will live forever in the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. Thank you That's very great. much, sir. Thank you, Ned. Thanks for having me.